Hey, what's up, folks? This is GK. As I have discussed in my previous videos, multi-cloud is going to be the future in most of the companies. Uh, for example, you will have companies using one cloud for one specific services, and then they'll use another cloud for another set of uh, specific services. So in this video, we're going to look at a specific use case. The use case is that you have some compute resources in AWS. So let's say your company is using EC2 or Lambda function in AWS as AWS is good in compute resources. And then you want to use GCP services. Let's say, you know, you want to use um, BigQuery or uh, AAML based services in GCP. Now the use case is that we have to connect from AWS to GCP, and then we're going to consume the services uh, of GCP from AWS. So that's the use case. Now in my previous videos, I have told you all that you know, you can obviously use service account keys. You can create a service account. You can store those credentials in AWS and then you can access GCP. That's an easiest way of uh, accomplishing this use case. But the disadvantage of using service account keys is that obviously it's a huge security risk because once you download the keys, you do not have control over them. Uh, they, they, uh, those keys can be scattered across developer desktops. They can be sent over emails. And sometimes you might end up those keys to be found on internet and then you know, you'll know you have unauthorized people accessing your GCP services. And the other con is that rotation of the keys because you have to maintain those keys. You have to rotate them once in three months or uh, two months or whatever your company company's policies. And with that, you'll also have a huge operational headache because if your company has lots of projects, you have to create lots of keys for different developers and based on the use cases, you have to create specific permissions for those keys, for those service accounts. So these are some of the main disadvantages. And in my previous videos, I also have discussed about impersonation and how to authorize or how to impersonate a service account uh, from a developer. And we have looked at that approach instead of using a service account key. But here in this solution, we're going to look at something called Workload Identity Federation. It's a feature in uh, GCP that will allow you to connect from AWS or Azure and consume GCP services without using service account keys. So it's going to use a uh, temporary OAuth tokens and then you're going to talk to GCP resources from AWS without using the keys. So that's a huge advantage. So with that, let's dive into the demo. So I'm going to use AWS in this example, but you can also try this with Azure if you're familiar with that. I'm gonna create EC2s in AWS. So the assumption is that you know a little bit of AWS and then obviously you also know how to create service accounts. I'm going to go a little faster in creating service accounts and all those things because I have already discussed those in my previous videos. If you have any questions, go back to my previous videos and watch them. So before I dive into the demo, I would highly recommend reading at least once this whole Workload Entity Federation documentation on Google Cloud documentation pages. And it's very well documented and it has clear steps of how to implement this specific demo that I'm going to follow. So please go through that at least once before you watch this video. So with that aside, as always, go to your cloud console. So here I'm going to create a service account. Go to service accounts. So create a service account and you can call it as AWS2 GCP or something for the sake of just name. Create and continue. And here for the role, I'm going to give cloud storage admin, but if you if you know specifically what permission you have to give, then just give only that permission. For the sake of demo, I'm just giving more wider permissions. Continue and done. So as you can see, um, I have the service account, AWS GCP, but you don't have to download the keys or create the keys here. So that's the most important part. Just create a service account and let it be there. The next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go to AWS real quick. So I'm, I'm going to pause the video and then just log into my console. So I have already created two instances, which are of type T2 micro. And if I click on one instance, I'm going to quickly show you what the instances are. So the instances permissions are to SSH from outside. Uh, and I already have a key to SSH from Putty. And then I already have a public IP address. The most important thing to note here is that I have assigned an instance profile, IAM, IAM role, to instance one, which is Amazon SSM role for instance quick setup, 
for second instance as well, I have an IAM role, which is GKEC2 role instance. Now in this demo, I'm going to allow only instance two to connect to GCP services. I don't want instance one to connect to my GCP project and then access the resources. So I'm going to use filters and then we're going to use conditions at the GCP side, but I'm going to show you how to do all that stuff. So don't worry about that part. For now, create a create EC2 instances and then assign IAM roles to those EC2 instances. If you want to have multiple IAM roles, you can have multiple IAM roles, or if you just have, if you just want to have one IAM role for both, you can just do that as well. So the next thing is we're going to go back to the GCP console. And here we just created a service account. So again, in the same section of IAM and admin, go to workload identity federation. So this is the service that GCP has created. It's an awesome service to allow to connect from AWS or Azure or OIDC. So add a provider. So I'm going to create a new pool and call it as something like YouTube demo. Click on continue and provider is going to be AWS obviously and provider name you can give YouTube demo prof just for the sake of name and then account ID is going to be the account number of AWS. So for that you can just copy from here, go to the AWS and on the top side you will see my account and you can you can copy the number from there and paste it here continue and you don't have to worry about any mappings here because this is fine this is what we, we needed anyways and let this cl expression be the way it is already defined here and then click on save okay so now we have everything done from here the next thing that we have to do is we have to grant access to our service account. <coughs> that way, because now from AWS, whenever we are making a call, so we're going to download a, a small file that I'm going to show you now. And when we are trying to connect from AWS, so it's going to talk to the service account. So this pool should have permission to the service account. <coughs> so the service account that we have created was AWS to GCP. And then I'm going to tell all the entities in this pool. So you can have multiple entities in this pool. So I'm going to tell all the entities in this pool to have permission on the service account. <coughs> or I can give only entities matching the filter. So let's say if I do that, only entities matching the filter, I have to select AWS role and select this one. So this is the exact thing that you have to mention. I'm going to give this in the description. So this is nothing but it's an account, it's an account number, STS, assumed role. And this is the instance profile that my instance is using. If I go back to the AWS console, you will see here I have this IAM role. So that's exactly what I have mentioned here. Okay, click on save. Now we're going to select the provider here and download the configuration file. So it's not a service account JSON file. It's just a configuration file that we have to use for this demo, for the EC2 instance to talk to, in this example, the cloud storage resources. Okay. So now we are pretty much done. We are done from the GCP side. So what I have to do is I have to connect to the EC2 instances. So I'm going to quickly do that. <coughs> so I've connected to the EC2 instance. So now I have to copy the new file to here. So let's say I have this file, which I have downloaded the client library configuration file. If I open this and then open this into a notepad, copy this one. And this is the one that is used to generate the temporary token. So I'll open the existing file and 
overwrite all this content it is there save it now i already have a sample python file here to test the connectivity and list all the objects or list all the buckets in the project so i'm going to show you that as well so here basically import google auth os and these are the normal stuff that you have to do and make sure that you already have installed google libraries and everything that is required for python again that is already very well documented in the google documentation page but let me know if you have any questions on that and make sure you already have python and everything obviously installed and then this is the important thing here we're going to set that config file that we have downloaded and then the environment which is the project uh, the google cloud project where we are connecting to and then here we're going to print all the buckets so now let's say if i run this python 3.7 and sample python you can see that there is a bucket terraform bucket backend now we can verify if you want to check if the bucket is existing in the same project go to cloud storage can see that there is one bucket and it's able to list that bucket here in my ec2 instance so if you see here i was able to get the bucket information and display the bucket information in the ec2 instance of aws without using service account keys and with using workload identity federation and this is a perfect example if you want to take this as an assignment since i have specifically used two different service account two different iam roles for two two ec2 instances try with another ec2 instance with a different role and see if this will work now as an example i'm going to show you by logging into another ec2 instance so i'm going to download the same file here as well client library and this delete the whole thing now if i run this python 3.7 sample you should get an error which is permission denied and this is where i have defined if you remember in the the workload entity federation of the project here if you remember here I have said allow only specific permission right if you remember here i have told that allow only iam role which is mapping to my gkc2 role instance so if you are trying to access now from any other instance with a different role so you will you should get you should ideally get this permission error that you're not able to impersonate that service account so this is a perfect example of you know even restricting ec2 instances based on the iam roles uh, that they are using because the entity here for an ec2 instance is an iam role and we are authorizing that identity to talk to gcp services and consume gcp services um so that's all for this demo hopefully you got this and then try to practice this at home and let me know if you have any questions while practicing this or if you have any doubts while practicing this please feel free to comment here and i hope you're going to use this in your company and replace your service account keys with workload identity federation so one thing to note though is that there are there might be some issues that you might find or some bugs that you will find by using while using the workload identity federation as it might not work with all the gcp services if you ever face such issues i highly recommend creating a support ticket with google and they are fast enough to respond to us thank you all again for watching take care bye